Welcome everyone to Good News at Noon from Good Samaritan Lutheran Church in Las Vegas. And yes, it is me, Pastor Jim Slater. He's back. Um, Kristen, I have successfully made our travels from Las Vegas back to upstate New York by way of Houston, Texas and Fort Myers, Florida and Palmyra, Virginia. And uh, now we are all settled in in our campsite here at the campground in um, Spencertown, New York. So uh, very happy to be with you again and to be able to share with you again some of my stories from Fox Hill. Uh, let me uh, begin by saying Freilich Himmelfart. I posted that on Facebook this morning. And for those of you who know German, you'll know that I just said, Happy Ascension Day. That's right, today is Ascension Day in the calendar of the church year. 40 days after Easter commemorates the day in which Jesus ascended up into heaven and uh, left behind a physical existence on earth for the heavenly realm, but not without doing so in promising us the gift of his spirit to be able to remind us that Jesus is always with us in our hearts and that as we, as followers of Jesus, live out that life, we become ways in which the world is able to see Jesus alive and well in the world today. In 10 days will be Pentecost when we celebrate that gift of the Holy Spirit. So happy Ascension Day, Freilicke Himmelfart to all of you. Now, uh, some of you may be rather new to Good News at Noon because it's been a while since I've done any of my Fox Hill stories, so let me just uh, again do a little bit of a review, uh, a sharing of uh, why I use these stories. Over, over my uh, 40 years of ministry, uh, especially over the last 35 of them, I began uh, collecting sermons that I wrote that are based along the model of the news from Lake Wobegon, something that Garrison Keeler would do on a radio program called A Prairie Home Companion. And as I adopted that idea, I was uh, able to uh, come up with stories that are similar in style to what he would do on that radio program. They are stories, I believe, that talk about faith alive in action in the world in a tiny little community of Fox Hill, Wisconsin. Now, it is uh, something that I make sure is tied to biblical passages. And so I share with you first those Bible readings to give you some idea of the foundation and perhaps the inspiration for those stories. But then the idea is to simply sit back and relax and enjoy the telling of a story and hopefully that story will provide for you some signs of faith and some insights into your own faith life. So that's what we'll be doing today, and uh, I'll be doing that for a few more Thursdays along the way as I continue to share this uh, list of stories that I have. Today, let me begin by saying that our uh, first lesson that I'd like to share with you is from the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk in the second chapter, verses one through four. The prophet writes, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what God will say to me and what God will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it for there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. Particularly out of this passage, make note of where it says, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. I had a Hebrew professor in college who said that that's the Old Testament Hebrew equivalent 
of saying, look for the signs on the interstate highway. They are big, they are bold and colorful as a means of being able to make everybody be able to see it. The second lesson is our gospel lesson from the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, verses 1 through 10. Luke records, Jesus said to his disciples, Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender, and if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, Move and it would be moved. You could uh, uh, be, uh, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the fold, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink? Do you thank a slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless servants. We have done only what we ought to have done. I think the important part of this passage is that Jesus reminds his disciples that sin will be a part of the world, but it is the job of each and every follower of Jesus to speak words of forgiveness, especially after sin is repented of. And that is the job of each of us. So with that as our background and our basis, here's my story for today. It's entitled, Everywhere a Sign. So it is true that faith really matters out there in my hometown of Fox Hill, Wisconsin. The big news in town is that it is now safe, once again, to go to the post office, the one with the new sign. And it has nothing to do with the lifting of COVID restrictions. Every morning, just about everybody in town walks to the post office to pick up their mail. Now, I say pick up their mail, but that's really quite coincidental to the real purpose of going there. You are bound to run into a neighbor the barkeeper, the justice of the peace, the hairdresser, the undertaker, or the minister. And if you want to know what's going on in town, that's the place to be. It's even rumored that Benjamin Dover, editor of the Fox Hill newspaper, The Hill and Vale Journal, will send reporters to the post office to pick up the mail and all the latest gossip. Of course, that means by the time it gets printed into the paper, everybody already knows about it. So Benjamin Dover's publishing philosophy is that a good newspaper doesn't discover the news, it just confirms it. And since Ben is too stingy to pay for home delivery of the Fox Hill Vale and Journal, it gets mailed to everyone. So in Fox Hill, it's considered normal to pick up Wednesday's paper at the post office on Thursday. That's about as satisfying as day-old bread, but people eat it up anyway. So if you want any late-breaking news, you go to the post office. Roger Bigley has been known to go to the post office for hours on a weekday morning and come back home without the mail at least once a week since retiring from Bigley Motors. The conversation between Roger and his wife is a simple one. She will ask, did you go to the post office? He will answer, yeah. She will say, did we get any mail? And he will answer, I don't know. 
he knows his forgetfulness is a sign of something, but he can't remember what it's called. Lyle Bartlett, the postmaster, with his usual chipper attitude, can often be found at the center of all of these late-breaking stories. But this week, you just didn't want to get within 10 feet of the man, or he'd bite your head off for no good reason. If you were to say, 55 cents for a stamp, why I remember when it was only a dime. Lyle would sniff back, you're complaining about 55 cents? Do you realize how cheap our mail is compared to other countries? Of course, I don't know what they do with all the money they make. It sure doesn't go to the places that need it the most. Lyle was still growling over the trip he made last Sunday and Monday all the way to Omaha, Nebraska, to complain about why the Fox Hill Post Office had been overlooked in the distribution of a limited quantity of new signs for post offices with location visibility problems. The signs were brightly colored and attractive, and he covetously wanted one. Doesn't everyone in Fox Hill go to the post office? He was asked at the Omaha main office. Well, yes, Lyle answered. Then what do you need a sign for? Well, he was spitting angry as he drove back to Wisconsin. What do I have to do to get them to notice us? He had been postmaster since he served his country in the Vietnam War, marching every day down the streets in New York City from his apartment to the APO office to deliver news to soldiers across the seas. Yet he still received no sign of respect. No wonder postal workers go crazy, he thought. But then he began to count the mile markers on the interstate, as was his habit, and he began to calm down. Each sign was like a steady rhythm, soothing and consistent. And while every mile marker told him only how far he had come, and now not how much farther he had yet to go, still he knew that every sign brought him closer to home. Now, not normally a church-going man, that struck him as a distinctly religious thought, and he was kind of amused and amazed at it, wondering if it were like a revelation, a sign that he ought to return to church someday. His head jerked, and he woke from his night vision to notice that the mile markers, now in Iowa, were decreasing in number rather than increasing. Ahead of him was a great big blue sign, usually one of invitation and often of relief. Rest area, it said. Nebraska Welcome Center, next right. Nebraska? Somehow in his anger, frustration, and distraction, he had missed the signs and gotten turned around in the wrong direction. And so it was a fragile man on the brink of despair who pulled into a parking space, turned off the engine, laid back his head, and rested, just as the sign had said. There would be no mail in Fox Hill on Monday. But back home on Tuesday and Wednesday, a despondent and depressed Lyle Bartlett put the mail out later and later each day, if you dared to enter the post office to pick it up at all. It was also a sign that occupied three hours of a Fox Hill Lutheran Church Council meeting on Monday night. Beatrice Borgen had died and left in her will $1,000 to the church for the construction of a sign for the front lawn. Baptized and confirmed at Fox Hill Lutheran, she had left home to go to college, work, marry, live her life, and then came back to Fox Hill with all sorts of odd ideas. Kenneth Keel, the council president, was the first to comment. A sign? That's all we need is another sign 
you've all seen that profanity on the outskirts of town that Mark's signs put up to promote his business. It says, Welcome to Schitt's Creek, with a caption that reads, It's okay, she's my sister. That's the first thing people see when they enter our town. Disgraceful! Besides, what's a sign going to say about us that people don't already know? Fox Hill Lutheran, the friendly church? And someone made a crack about truth in advertising. He continued, how do you define how much? He continued, how long, how good, how bad, quantity versus quality, perhaps over 500 served? You see, the local Scottish restaurant was fighting the zoning board over the size of their sign. He continued, besides, at most, we'll have maybe 60 people on a good day. How about 102 years in the same location? Well, then we'd have to change it every year. Or if we said, Vicar Lena, pastoral intern, well, how much longer is she going to be with us? Finally, they agreed on the obvious, Fox Hill Lutheran Church. Truth is their motto, sumus quid sumus, we are what we are. Then they argued whether the sign should be parallel to the road with words on one side or perpendicular to the road with print on both sides, each facing traffic. Ken Keel, now resigned to the idea, said, that way we'll get them coming and going, and that carried the vote. Now, Vicolina stayed pretty much out of the sign debate, don't you know? She already had a grueling day with the Hansen family, whose son, Eric, was in confirmation class. Eric was a straight-A student in class, but never attended worship. He had failed the first year because he didn't have enough participation points. Warned again that he wasn't meeting the requirements for confirmation, his parents were furious with Vicar Lena, and they backed it up with surprisingly good theology for a family that never warmed a spot in a pew. Your point system is blatant works righteousness, accused Mary Hansen, and her husband Albert added, points aren't going to get Eric into heaven, and just because the others have more points than he does, it doesn't make them better Christians. She knew they had a point. Faith can't be quantified or even qualified. Faith is. God is. And we are gods. You are absolutely right, Vicar Lena began. Now she was tempted to quote a seminary professor who said to her many years ago, knowing John 3.16 may get you into heaven, but it won't get you through this class. But she didn't. Instead, she said, I use confirmation points as a sign of faith put into practice as a measure of where you've been and an indication of where you are going. I'm looking for a sign of commitment that shows your faith active and living. Getting confirmation points teaches you to act faithfully so that when points are no longer the goal, you will already want to be faithful. Eric was virtually in tears at this point and asked to speak with Vicar Lena alone. In the privacy of her office, Eric confessed, you know how much I participate in class and study for exams. I really want to learn all about the church and all about Jesus. And I want to come to worship too, I really do. But my parents will have nothing to do with it. When I try to make my own arrangements for a ride, they get more mad and it's too much to argue with them. Please don't let that stop me from being confirmed. Now Vicar Lena was the one crying. It does my heart good to hear you speak like this, Eric. I would be completely wrong to allow a millstone like these points prevent you from what is obviously an important milestone in your life. Hey. That's a catchy phrase to put on a sign, she thought to herself. 
but an argument over a confirmation student wasn't going to break Fox Hill Lutheran Church, nor would an argument over a sign. They've been divided over more serious and hotter issues than that, and yet always seem to come together. And whether her name was on the sign or not did not change the fact that deep down inside she really loved these people, and they appreciated their pastor. Late Wednesday evening, while Lyle was locking up the post office, a UPS truck pulled up and delivered a four-foot-by-eight-foot box. Lyle tore open the lid and the sides to reveal a rainbow-colored sign with black block lettering saying, United States Post Office, Fox Hill, Wisconsin, with the zip code. More beautiful than its design, and more impressive than its colors, the sign verified the existence of Fox Hill and commended its faithful postmaster. He spent the entire evening attaching the sign to the front of the post office. It looked a whole lot smaller than what he remembered in the advertisement, but it was his. So this morning, the mail was out on time in everybody's box by 8.45 a.m., no one seemed to notice the sign, or at least they didn't make any comments about it. But in Fox Hill, you don't mention such grandiose new things. But everyone did notice a happier, friendlier Lyle Bartlett, and punctual mail, and the return of the town folk to share the news. You seem better today, Lyle, said Vicar Lena. That's a good sign. Lyle replied, My God-given purpose is to serve the town. I'm just doing my job. Do I detect a mustard seed of faith, Lyle? I'd love to see you in church sometime, Vicar Lena added. We'll also have a new sign soon. Lyle continued, You never stop trying to sow the seed, do you, Vicar? Vicar Lena replied, Just doing my job. And that's the good news from Fox Hill, where faith really matters for every single man, woman, and child. Oh, oh, and the married ones, too. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I'm not sure if I'm actually able to see people. Uh, I have a new computer, and it's, um, st I'm still getting used to how everything works on here. Um, so... Uh, let's see. I can see that Dale was on board with us, and Connie, Connie and Dale, it's good to see you, and to know that you were on board with today's story from Fox Hill. Spread the news around that uh, I'll be back every Thursday, and uh, look forward to sharing time with you again as we, as we share the good news at noon from Good Samaritan. God bless you all. Bye now.